This video is an excerpt from a larger course on Udemy. You can find the links in the comments below. This video is a visual timeline of the history of JavaScript and ECMAScript and how it's tied in with the, the growth of the web and the process that it went through from inception until present. And the reason I, I wanted to make it was because there, there's definitely a lot of hate for JavaScript on, on it not being a good language. And it's very, very important to understand why it is the way it is, and also a kick in the pants for JavaScript developers to get onto ES6, which is, is the modern uh, the modern release of JavaScript. So I, I wanted to use something visual, and unfortunately, as I looked around the web, there's lots of there's lots of resources, but it, it tends to fall into one of two camps. Either it's a, a blog that's 15 pages long, and after a couple minutes, I find myself having drifted off to Wikipedia and reading an article about Roger Rabbit or something, or it is a, a PNG file that drops everything all at once, and it's like, bam, look at all the stuff that happened. And I think, wow, this is cool. I don't understand any of it. I'm going to go do something else. So uh, I decided to make my own thing. Since we're talking about JavaScript, I made it in JavaScript. So this will be our timeline. And the first couple are a little PowerPointy, but we'll get to a timeline that will things will slide in from the right-hand side. And keep in mind that as I, as I go through, there's always interpretation about dates, about when something actually started. Uh, I lived through most of this, as well as you know having done research. So this shouldn't be too much, hopefully too much variance. I, I made this primarily for, pe again, people who are learning JavaScript or maybe have learned it recently and just need, need, to, need to move in and, and don't realize why they need to update their JavaScript and, and it's time. Uh, or they just don't understand why things are so kooky and maybe, maybe are, are doing some Python as well as some Node.js and don't understand why JavaScript seems so weird. This will hopefully, uh, hopefully help out with that process. So we're going to start in 1972 when the C programming language came out. And it was developed by Dennis Ritchie, who incidentally also helped make Unix. But the C programming language is the lingua franca. It is the precursor for almost every modern language, either because every modern language is programmed in it or based on it. And JavaScript is no different. Spider Monkey, I, I think Chakra, the V8 Engine, and Node.js, they're all programmed in C, even today. Uh, it's still preeminent. And JavaScript is also based on C. It has a C-like syntax. So C is incredibly important. I wish we could talk about it all day. But we move forward two years to, I used old school logos whenever I could. But this is Microsoft in 1974, founded by a guy named Bill Gates. And in 1981, DOS comes out, which is Digital Operating System. IBM was looking for an operating system to host on their, their new PC. And Microsoft ended up winning the contract. Kind of a funny story. But whether you like Windows or Microsoft, because Windows follows DOS, it's absolutely in critical to the growth of the web because that's what people used in the 90s. And uh, 1991, Python comes out. And we'll, we'll come back to this. But Python has already been made. It's actually really funny because Python has had this massive surge in popularity. And it's actually quite quite old relative to other languages. So... In any case, 1991, that same year, the first and only website is created. It is info.cern.ch, and you can see this. I, I pasted the source code here as, a, as an image file. There are nine tags. It was made at CERN, which is a huge physics lab in Switzerland, by a British physicist. And if you think about that, that is hysterical, that in 1991, first of all, there is no web. But HTML and the web are so complicated that it takes a British physicist at one of the biggest physics labs in the world to be able to, to make it or, or get a page live. It's funny how far we've come. So this is 1991. And we hop forward here, and, and we've got some crazy growth. In 1992, we go from 1 to 10. So we've got 10 times growth. In 93, we got 130, so 13 times growth. We're remaining at a factor of 10 here. 94 to 2,500. And then the following year, 95, which is kind of our starting point, 23K. So this is this is kind of the, the, the start of our story here, 1995, which is an absolute bombshell of a year for the web. First of all, there are 23,000 websites. And it's it's a little bit... Uh, it, it's it's a little bit hard to characterize what that was like because Windows 95 is released obviously in 1995, but the web the web is gaining traction, but there still aren't a lot of people that have modems. There's still not a lot of access. 
it, the web is just is still definitely in that infancy phase because a couple of years ago it didn't even exist. Well, Netscape is founded, and Netscape comes out with Navigator, which is the first major browser. Now, Mosaic existed before, but Netscape is committed to the web and invested in it. And a guy named uh, Mark Andreessen is the CEO, and he sees the web pages as, as, as exciting, but they're totally inert, which means they're static. They don't do anything. And he wants, uh, he wants a web that's dynamic, and he's, he's not the only one. But kind of like the maybe at least the uncle of the web, he sees a, a web with dynamic web pages. And he's got to move fast because Microsoft is coming. Like I said, Windows 95 has come out this year, and Microsoft doesn't have to play with anybody. Windows 3.1 is, is the totally dominant operating system. They are the giant, and they're going to come out with something. Python has already come out and is, is quite popular. I'm going to hit space a couple times here. Cold Fusion comes out this year, which is Adobe's programming language. It's pretty much defunct now. Java is born in 1995. PHP is born in 95. Apache Web Server comes out, and Ruby comes out. So this is an absolute crazy explosion for the web. Stuff is happening, and somebody is going to, is going to create a good web programming language. So Brent, uh, Andreessen hires a, an engineer named Brendan Eich to make a, a scripting language, and, he, and he's got 10 days to do it because it is a rush order. And he doesn't want to go after Java programmers for a couple reasons, Java or C programmers, but for a couple reasons. One, the web is, is a totally new thing. It's, it's really going to be hard to get computer science folks excited to migrate to the web when there's not really a web. And, and you can't hand Java to, to people who don't know how to program. So they wanted it to be more geared toward designers and and towards hobbyists and, and amateurs. Well, that means that the, the rules have to be somewhat lax. And, and it means that it's got to be fairly easy to pick up. And the, the whole purpose is for it to live inside the browser because it's just going to do browser type stuff. So it's a very peculiar thing. It's not really a standard for this. Python at least had C. Java, which has come out, had C and had Python, Ruby and PHP and so on. There's not really a, a precursor for this scripting language that's, that's going to come out. So they, they put a, a total rush order on it and get it finished in in just 10 days and granted there's going to be oddities and and you know strange things but that is the birth of javascript in in may of 1995 it's actually called mocha for some reason all programming languages have to have something to do with coffee i i don't know why uh, java was actually named oak initially um javascript would actually probably be called oak script if that hadn't changed to java so take your pick but some, so there's a couple interesting things going on at this time as well. Uh, Java, which is actually made by Sun Microsystems, they are in the process of putting something together with Netscape because they want to run Java in the browser, but they don't want it to be an actual uh, a, a scripting language either. They, Java is still Java. Think like JSP or Java applets. So they're working on cutting this deal, and uh, and and so you have a very a very clear connection here between Java and whatever the scripting language, which was called Mocha, uh, it, it's going to exist because the the thought is Java is going to do the back end, the backside or server side stuff, and this new scripting language by Netscape will do the 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 front end or the client side stuff. So it it actually was a a very easy name to switch to when they made this deal with Sun. They said you can call it JavaScript. So it's a huge win for uh, for Netscape because they get to ride the the Java popularity train. Java has been pretty much the most popular language ever since, uh, at least according to the Tibor language uh, Tibor index. But JavaScript gets its name because Sun allowed them to use Java in the title. It's great again because it's going to be confusing to the average person. People still confuse it all the time, uh, and it and it's it's also makes sense because they're connected. Again, Java's supposed to run in Netscape, kind of doing the server side stuff, and JavaScript is supposed to run on the client side. So you have this big win later that year in December. Internet Explorer comes out, and Internet Explorer, sure enough, is Microsoft's big appearance. And Netscape has just barely stayed ahead of the game eBay is founded, and Amazon is founded. So we have this, again, 95, if you're a web developer or at all interested in web development, this is a big, 
big year. So we go to 96. We have another tenfold growth to 250,000 websites. So Brendan Eich takes JavaScript to ECMA, which is the European Consumer Manufacturers Association. They're based in Geneva. It's been around since the 60s. And they put standards together for computers because back in the 60s, Computers had a really hard time talking to each other, however hard that may, to be, may be to believe. But the thought here is that we've got to standardize this language as soon as possible because Internet Explorer just came out. Other browsers are going to come out. There's going to be other implementations. And as the web grows, the better chance we have of, of standardizing the, our scripting language, the better chance it, it will have of surviving and, and the more consistency and continuity there can be. And the web can, can blossom. Well, so that begins in, in 1996, uh, and here's where a lot of confusion starts. The, the standardization begins in 96, but JavaScript was actually made in 95. Why the difference, or why couldn't they just call them the same thing? Well, the answer is pretty simple. Uh, copyright, or money, or however you want to look at it. Sun Microsystems let Netscape play the Java token once already when they were working on their deal. In 1996, when they want to create the standard, they cannot call it JavaScript because it would violate Sun's uh, copyright law on Java. So they have to call it something else. So here's where the difference is. JavaScript is the implementation, and ECMAScript is the standard. ECMAScript would have been JavaScript, I think, but it couldn't be JavaScript because of copyright laws. So that's where the two diverge for the first time. In 1997, we hit the crazy peak point of a million websites. So that is a big year. And then I had two things slide on here. This is the, the JScript logo. Uh, and then ES1 is finally standardized. Now, what is JScript? It was, it was in, uh, Internet Explorer's JavaScript engine. Spider Monkey is what uh, the engine in um, Netscape Navigator was called you know, using JavaScript. Uh, Microsoft, again, they, they, they can't call it JavaScript, so they, they call it JScript for the same reasons ECMA couldn't. It also feels a little bit like the big tough bully beating up the nerdy kid uh, because he's smart. But JScript is not all that clever, but it is pretty much the same thing as JavaScript. And it is based on the ES1 standard. And this is a really big breakthrough. It's missing some stuff, but it runs much cleaner and better in the browser. We get to 98, and ES2 is released. And there's not a lot of changes, just some formalizations and stuff. But this is a good sign, because ES is consistently coming out with new standards, which means JavaScript is going to stay relevant. And it's important, because we get to this uh, 98, and Google is it comes out, and... Google actually offers themselves that year for a ton of money, a million dollars. Think about that, a million bucks to AltaVista, who was, I think, owned by Yahoo, and they were turned down. So that turned out to be a poor financial decision. We get to 99, and ES3 is released, along with the XML HTTP request object. Now, this is not actually part of ES3, but almost all the browsers supported it at the time. And if you don't know what it is, every time you make an AJAX request, you are using that thing. So the browsers are already primed for AJAX as early as 1999. No one's using the term AJAX, and no one's really making use of it yet, but it is possible. So we get to 2000, and things start to get pretty hairy. ES4 a release. So we've got a release every year. JavaScript came out in 95. It went to ECMA in 96. ES1 comes out in 97, ES2, ES3, and ES4. And this is a big release because the goal now is to take uh, ECMAScript, or JavaScript, whatever you want to call it, uh, JScript, ActionScript is actually based on ES now. We haven't, haven't uh, sl slid that on yet. But the goal is to take it enterprise because back in the beginning here, there were only 23,000 websites. Well, there are way, way, I mean, we, we've had this crazy explosion to past a million. We're about to hit the uh, the 50 million mark shortly so there's been this massive explosion and I'm gonna hit it hit it again we'll come back and do these in a second but the dot-com bubble is at its peak Yahoo is at its all-time high so there is money coming out of people's ears and these businesses are, are just exploding in Silicon Valley and elsewhere so there's gotta be some big change here from the original tiny tiny web which is which was made just for tiny scripting 
you know, projects to something that's more enterprise. ES4 included classes. It included short functions. It included like a, a let and a const. It, it included some deconstructuring. If that sounds familiar, it's because all that stuff is in ES6. Well, ES4 was not popular, and I'll get to that in a second. Flash Player 5 comes out along with Action Script version that's based on ES4. This is the only thing that ever uses ES4. Baidu, uh, it's kind of like the, the Chinese version of Amazon, but it's one of the biggest websites in the world, is founded in 2000. And Microsoft does finally does something beautiful uh, because the same year Windows ME and, uh, and 2000 came out, and those were not good operating systems. But C Sharp is born, and that, that was a definitely a beautiful thing. But we've got a big problem here because I'm going to hit, uh, I'm going to move us forward there, and ES4 is dragging on. And I'm going to hit it again, and we've got Y2K uh, as a distraction. So these two things up here have created a, a really different dynamic. That One, the, there was lots of money, and suddenly, pop, there's this huge vacuum. And so now you have everybody scrambling, trying to figure out, how do I survive? You have Y2K. I graduated from college in 2001. A few of my friends who were, who were older took jobs at, at finance companies trying to solve that Y2K bug. And there's, there's almost a kind of an exodus away from how do we make the web better and bigger to trying to solve this Y2K problem, which turned out to be a joke. And, and now there's this big vacuum in the industry. It was really hard when I graduated to find a, a job as a developer because the dot-com pop. So you've got four really big players in Microsoft, Yahoo, uh, Adobe, and Mozilla. Mozilla is essentially the new Netscape because Netscape gets, uh, gets bought, I think, by AOL. And they are all in on ECMAScript 4, and, and, and they all have their own versions of ECMAScript, JavaScript, again, being the primary one next to, next to JScript and then ActionScript. And there's disagreement now because, again, you've got, you've got lots of politic going on. You've got lots of changes. There's lots of pressure on JavaScript and on the web. And Microsoft is so against ES4 that they threaten to sue if it actually becomes standard. And Mozilla's trying to push it forward. And, and you have engineers moving around. It's, it's the same today. The difference is this is not an open source project where you're free to work on whatever you want. If you go to Microsoft and you leave Mozilla or Adobe, your whole allegiance might change and vice versa. So this is kind of the beginning of the dark ages of, of the web and JavaScript. One other good thing happens in, in 01 uh, is Wikipedia is founded to try and take on Encarta, which was Microsoft's version. So 03... ES4 still dragging on, Firefox is released, ES4 still dragging on, we get here, and ES4 is finally abandoned in 04. And we hit the 50 million mark, and then watch down here in the bottom, I'm sorry, uh, the Facebook is founded, again this is old school, but in 2004 the Facebook is founded at Harvard, totally no name, tiny little company in PHP. But there are 50 million websites, so we're seeing some recovery. Even though website growth has been slow, it's only been about 10 million new, new sites the past couple of years. And then on the bottom, ES3.1 uh, takes over as a, as a compromise, and ES4 is abandoned. So 3.1 doesn't include even close to what ES4 did. But there's got to be some changes because now there's 50 million sites. The, the, the wounds are trying to heal from the dot-com pop. Uh, Microsoft's trying to to get bigger, right? Uh, Adobe and and Yahoo, they're all trying to survive and and make it to the next phase of the web. So something has to change, and ES 3.1 begins now. In 05, ES 3.1 is lagging, kind of like ES 4 did. It's not finished. Ajax, a, a, a UE engineer, comes out with a white paper suggesting Ajax and and doing uh, doing background data. In 07. Sorry, 06, uh, 3.1 is still dragging on, and jQuery comes out. And I don't know, uh, depending on how long ago you learned JavaScript, you might be thinking jQuery is so not cool. Well, let me tell you, as a dude who lived through this, jQuery was a miracle sword brought down from heaven to unite the, the territories. I mean, it was awesome. Because at this point, so you've got, you've got Firefox, you still have Netscape Navigator hanging around, because there are still people running Windows 98, uh, and 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 earlier, 
you you have people running all sorts of versions of Internet Explorer. So there's total chaos as a web developer. If if you're old enough, you'll remember seeing web pages that said this site is best viewed in Internet Explorer 6.2.1 or something like that, like down to the minor, minor release. There's no consistency at all. And Microsoft was the hated because they were the one browser that didn't follow any even of their own rules, it didn't seem like. And jQuery almost solves that, or, or kind of solves that for us, because it creates a, like a, a unified language for the DOM, almost like a almost like the first polyfill for the web, where if you have stuff that's not supported by this particular browser, jQuery will make it work. So it was it was a phenomenal, incredible release that created so much more incentive to try and, and work in the DOM because you have a much better chance of it working everywhere. All right, YouTube is also purchased that year by Google. And I, I vividly remember thinking, that is a really, really stupid purchase. No one is gonna wanna watch random videos by random people. And Google won Rob zero. Actually, Google probably has more than one point on me. But we've got jQuery and we've got YouTube, and, and this puts a lot more pressure on JavaScript because when we have jQuery, there's lots of incentive for developers to, to make cooler stuff for, the, for all web pages. And two, you've got YouTube, which people are starting to stream. Now, those are primarily in Flash at this point, but that's not going to last very long. So let's go on, and we have a BlackBerry logo here. Smartphones are becoming standard, and this is, again, more pressure on JavaScript because people aren't just looking at web pages on their desktop. They're looking at them on a little tiny screen. And if they're not dynamic, and at this point, you know, th there's WAP sites and mobile dedicated sites, but we've got to get those dynamic because when people go to ESPN.com or, or – or they go to Microsoft.com or whatever, they're expecting to see a web page, not a, not a billboard. So uh, smartphones show up. Twitter is also founded in 06. And in 07, we had 100 million websites. Gmail comes out. And the first iPhone comes out as well. So Gmail is a really big deal because now, kind of like, I mean, the iPhone was a big deal. I, I use Android, but some of you are definitely waiting for this. The 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 and well, let's go ahead and go to the next one. Android comes out the following year, but you've got the 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 smartphone revolution. That's a that's huge. Gmail is a big deal because people aren't using email clients anymore, like like Outlook and Eudora and Pegasus. They're using they're using the web. So we have more pressure and more pressure and more pressure. And this year in in '08 is a particularly big year for JavaScript because the Chromium project comes out. So Chrome, it's a great, I mean, it's just a browser, albeit an awesome one. The big thing, though, is V8. So Google created a new JavaScript engine, in contrast to, say, SpiderMonkey. It still just, it, it runs a, a JavaScript, which is a implementation of ECMAScript. And the V8 engine, instead, un unlike all of its predecessors, it's able to compile the JavaScript to machine code before it runs. So uh, that's a fancy way of saying JavaScript is now really, really fast. And this is awesome. And if you haven't noticed, down here, ES1 is still lagging along. So we're going to go on to 2009, and we've got two big things that are going to happen. One, uh, ES3.1 becomes ES5. Node.js comes out, and I guess, sorry, three things, and Flash is pretty much killed. So let's hit hit all of those. ES 3.1 is just is renamed ES 5. It, it doesn't change. It's it's gone through this really slow process. And and look at the timeline here. 2000 is when ES 4 started. So we haven't had a new standard since 1999. It takes 10 years before there's a new release of JavaScript or new new release of ECMAScript. Look at what's happened. C sharp came out. Flash Player has become the predominant means on the web. You've got several really big websites. You have the dot-com bubble rise and fall. You have, we're up to 100 million websites. Node.js, so you've got back-end JavaScript now, which would have been totally laughable. You've got uh, the, the smartphone revolution. JavaScript is incredibly fast. jQuery, I mean, JavaScript has to change. We're still almost running like it was, in, like it was run in 1995. That's what ES5 was. Was it, it was a, hey, we've got to do something. It's totally inadequate, even for 2008. And, and, uh, and 
uh, sorry, 2009. It's, it's totally inadequate for 09, but it's at least something, okay? Node.js, well, Ryan Dahl took the V8 engine out of uh, the browser. So he took it out of Chrome and ran it in its own process. So this is totally revolutionary. I, I'm sure you've heard about it. If you haven't, definitely go check it out. But Node.js allows JavaScript developers to write code outside of the DOM for the first time and since since history. And, and this is another major game changer. Think back to 1995. What is the purpose of the web? It's a tiny little scripting language for designers and hobbyists. There's 25,000 websites. It's not going to be that big a deal, but we're trying to prepare. We don't quite know what's going to happen. We'll get it figured out later. Now you have Node.js running server side with no DOM at all. So if everything, everything is different. And then you have, uh, I have a goodbye Adobe Flash here. Steve Jobs announced that year that iOS was not going to support Flash anymore, which is essentially the same thing as killing Flash because every any anybody who's going to look at a website on a phone, half of the people aren't going to be able to, to use it if it's in Flash, which means all the Flash developers, or at least all the stuff Flash was responsible for, needs to now be written in JavaScript. So we have another bomb dropped on JavaScript. So that's 09. In 2010, Netflix, which has actually been in existence for a long time, it was the mail your, your DVD in, Netflix uh, streaming begins in 2010. More, more kind of like YouTube, where YouTube has now gone to mostly an HTML5 player. Netflix is streaming content, tons of bandwidth, very JavaScript intensive. Instagram is founded. Angular JS comes out and Backbone comes out. So we're going to call here before I, I keep moving us forward. Around 08 maybe, 07, 08 is kind of the beginning of that golden age of JavaScript. We have a renaissance in here where there's a recovery after the dark ages. So we got no man's land in like the 2000, maybe 04. 04 to 06, the web is healing up in that kind of a renaissance. It's finding itself. And now we've got an explosion. The following year... In 11, Ember.js comes out, and so does Twitter Bootstrap, and Twitch is founded. Kind of like Netflix, more crazy, intense, bandwidth-sucking video. The next year, we hit 500 million or half a billion websites. And XML is crushed by JSON. Not really, but JSON passes Ajax, uh, JSON passes XML as the, uh, the, pro the most popular uh, means of passing data around through an API. So this is really, really important as well. The following year in 13, React is open sourced by Facebook. And in uh, 14, we have a billion websites. Vue.js is released and HTML5 is standardized. So I'm going to hit it one more time. And here we are in 2015. We've got everything. We're not quite done yet. But look at this screen. JavaScript came out in 1995. There were a few tiny updates before 2000, and then ES4 started. And ES4 lags and lags and lags, and Microsoft and, and I, th I think Adobe, uh, Yahoo did not want to see this happen, so it changes to this compromised, stripped-down, not that great a version, which lags and lags and lags, and eventually comes out in 2010, and then nothing happens for another five years. So you're talking, it's been 20 years, and JavaScript, which was made in 10 days, for a web of 23,000 pages and growing, granted, I mean, it's, it's expected to grow to a million, but all the websites and companies are pretty tiny, and we're, we're in crazy competition with all these other programming languages. JavaScript has hardly changed by this point. We've got, we've got a billion websites. You had this golden a age where you have high-octane websites running entirely in JavaScript, front-end and back-end. Angular is, is powering lots of front-end websites. It's thousands of files by large teams doing React, doing Vue, doing Ember. Ember's got a passionate community, loving JavaScript. You have Node.js and, and the explosion of the smartphones. Everything is different. JavaScript is the only thing that hasn't gotten its update. So in 2015, ES6 finally is released. And it's unfortunate that they didn't wait a year, although they, they should have released it a long time ago. But it's a little confusing because 2015 is ES6, 2016 is going to be ES7, and so on. This is the update that the web needed bad. It brings in classes, it brings in uh, setters and getters, 
it modernizes JavaScript because now you've got a need for Java developers who are sitting across the, the aisle from uh, C Sharp and JavaScript developers. They all need to be able to talk together. You need, uh, you need consistency as, as developers come and go. You can't be writing hodgepodge jQuery anymore. We need a modern, high-octane language for a modern web that's supporting terabytes of data crossing YouTube and Twitch and so on. So ES6, while I would say ES5 is modern JavaScript, ES6 is the current version of JavaScript and is so big, in fact, that not all the, not all the, the browsers even support it yet. So it's not going to change your life, but if, if you want to be a modern programmer, especially if, if, like I said, if you're doing Ruby and JavaScript or you're doing some PHP and some Ruby and some JavaScript, this will solve so many of your problems as you hop between places. If you're a Java developer and someone's twisting your arm to write some Node.js, ES6 will help you help you uh, keep from thinking, why does this look so so funny? Because JavaScript's no longer a little silly scripting language. It's made for, for high-performance, uh, serious developers. In 16, ES7 comes out. It's really small. ES8 uh, comes out the following year, which is also... Uh, which is also quite small. So that brings us uh, pretty much to the roundup of our of our chart. And it's again, yes, JavaScript to ES6 is not going to solve all your problems, but we have a, a very consistent release here in the in the early phases, and you have the stall for a long, long time, and finally we've gotten to this update. JavaScript did not enjoy a normal pregnancy. I mean, it, it had a 10, 10 day window to get released. And then it had the bizarre growth of the web to deal with. And JavaScript has always done an incredible job of being what the web needs it to be today. Well, the web of 2018, or whatever year you're watching this, is very different than the web of 1995. And I can only imagine what the web of 2028 will look like. So if you don't know it already, get busy and start learning ES6. In my following videos, we'll start taking a look at some of the easy wins, and we'll get started.